Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making a summer squash galette. You know, like a freeform tart with beautiful smoked gouda and thinly sliced zucchini and yellow squash. For all of you that are like, what do I do with all my summer squash from my garden and my yellow squash from my garden and I'm sick of zucchini bread and I'm sick of zucchini anything. But this is something a little different. This is gonna make your summer picnics, your fall picnics, superb. Any time of year as an appetizer with the flakiest crust, you will have raves from your guests. But before we get started, I want you to click that notification button because I don't want you to miss one video or tip that I have coming out. And I really, really love when you become a subscriber because you're very welcome to my, to my channel. All right, so let's get started. We're going to be making a flaky pie crust, uh, like known as a pat brise. Very super easy. I make it in the food processor. I already have two cups of all-purpose flour uh, in, in the uh, food processor bowl, one and a quarter teaspoons of kosher salt, and I'm going to give it a little whirl, just a little whirl. Easy, super easy. And then I'm going to add one and a half cups of unsalted diced butter. All right, unsalted, that's sort of cubed. It, it can be half an inch, it can be a quarter of an inch cut, whatever you want, but it's got to be ice cold. That's the deal, because that's how you get the flakiest crust. And I'm not kidding you, not kidding. And now I'm going to use my little trick. I take my kitchen towel and put it over, because sometimes food processors have a little, little openings, and you get a little puff of flour on your face and I hate that so I'm doing that so you want to pulse maybe five six seven times until you get pea-sized pieces and let's check this out to make sure we have pea-sized pieces and we do and I mean like garden peas so little pieces these chunks of butter is what's going to cause your flakiness in your dough now the next thing I'm going to add is a quarter cup of icy water. So before I make any type of pie crust, any time of year, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, summer, I always start out with a bowl or a measuring cup of icy water, and I always make extra just in case I need more. So I've measured out just a few seconds ago a quarter cup of icy water, and our piece de resistance is a tablespoon of some sort of an acid. And here I'm going to be using apple cider vinegar, which basically denatures the proteins in the flour, makes it easier to roll out when we do roll out our dough. And actually, it's known as extensibility to us bakers. But very easy, super, super easy. That actually creates a little less gluten and actually makes it easier to roll out. And you're pastry will be divine. So I'm going to add our one quarter cup of icy water. I'm going to add our tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And I'm just going to pulse it again. You don't want to over pulse. Remember, mixing creates gluten once water gets mixed with that wheat flour, that all purpose flour. All right, which is a type of wheat flour. Now, let's see. Do I need a little more? Do I need a little more? If you can gather it up, I'm going to add a little bit more water. So you always want to have that water available. So I'm just going to eyeball it, maybe add a couple tablespoons more. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. If it's a little humid, your flour will actually absorb moisture from the air and actually be a little wetter. All right, and you don't want to add too much. Okay, I think we're good. Now, it doesn't look like a dough yet. I'm going to get my beautiful zucchini and yellow squash out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump my dough or my crumbs right now into a bowl. I always do this, and you've seen me in other recipes uh, do this as well. It's the easiest thing to do to bring your dough together. I'm going to be using my hands to do this. So you're just going to take your hand and you're going to squeeze. And notice it comes together very easily, right? It can actually be brought together almost, not quite like wet sand, 
but it's just, it feels so nice. You can feel and see some of the chunks of butter and you don't want to destroy those because in the oven, those little pieces of butter are going to melt and they're going to leave spaces. And those spaces are going to fill with steam. And the steam is going to puff the dough above it and below it and next door to it. And it's going to create that flakiness that we love. So if you notice, that little extra bit of water is what I needed. My flour must have been a little dry. Sometimes it can be from the air conditioning because your flour, you know, is in your kitchen. So it depends. All kitchens are different. You have to play it by ear, but you want to bring it together. That's why I do it in a bowl. And now I'm going to take some plastic wrap and we're going to give our dough a rest. I usually give it a rest for one to two hours. I can sometimes make this ahead of time, um, even a couple weeks ahead and freeze it and then thaw it out when I want it. So you're gonna put it in plastic wrap, you're gonna cover one side, just like you're tucking a baby in for a nap, okay? Tuck it under and then push into a disc. So you don't wanna handle it too much and you certainly don't wanna knead it, you just wanna gather it like I did in the bowl. All right, one to two hours until it's nice and chilled and the gluten has relaxed. So while our dough is chilling, I'm going to get our part of our filling ready, and that has to do with our uh, yellow squash and our zucchini. So what I did was I thinly sliced it. This is about a quarter of an inch, between a quarter and an eighth of an inch thick. Do whatever you feel comfortable with. I did a medium zucchini and then one medium yellow squash, and they're all different sizes, so you could do little ones, big ones. Um, you can even slice them lengthwise if you want, but I thought rounds were really pretty, and we're going to shingle them around our galette. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prepare and try to get some of the water out of that squash. Water in all vegetables, it can be a problem. So we want a dry filling. We don't want our cheese to get wet and our crust to get wet. We want it really flaky. And trust me, it's going to be. A teaspoon of kosher salt is going to sprinkle that over your squash. And I have minced one clove of garlic. So you're going to put that in there. And then we're going to mix it up. And we're going to let the salt do its work. And you know what osmosis is, right? So osmosis is going to draw the water out because water tends to go from a higher concentration of itself to a lower concentration. So the highest concentration right now is inside the vegetable because most fruits and vegetables are water and it's going to pull it out. The salt is on the outside, so that's the less concentrated water area. So it's going to draw the water out and sort of make them look like they're perspiring, okay? I don't want to say sweating, but they're perspiring. And if they get a little too wet, we're going to only leave this for about 10 minutes or so. It doesn't have to be left for long. Um, I have paper towels uh, on a sheet pan. And if you see that they're exuding a lot of water, and they should not, um, you can always just lay them out, okay? Uh, and they will stay nicely until you're ready to do your roll out of your galette. Okay, I'm gonna wait 10 minutes. So now we're ready to form our summer squash galette. So I rolled out my dough to a 14 inch diameter. It's between a quarter and an eighth of an inch thick. Thinner is better because it'll crisp up really nicely. I put it on a pizza pan, like a 14, uh, 14 inch diameter pizza pan. You can even make it into an oblong, you can make it into an oval, whatever shape you have for your baking sheet or your pizza pan. And I covered it with uh, parchment paper, uh, the pan itself. So I rolled it out and just moved it over so you don't have to see me rolling it out. And you can see little chunks of butter because that's where our flakiness is gonna come. Now, I have two cups of shredded smoked Gouda, and this I would highly recommend. It is a spectacular cheese. And I had to do everything I could to not munch on it myself while I was shredding it. You want to keep a one and a half inch border all the way around, and you're going to put your cheese down. So this is two cups. I might have packed it a little because I like to go a little extra heavy on the cheese because I love it. It's so good. It's so good. I've had people tell me that they cut a slice for themselves, finished it, and then they 
it was like a magnet. They just couldn't get away from this tart. It was so delicious. All right, so once your cheese is out and spread to about one and a half inches around, all around, because you want that border, we're going to uh, sort of fold it in after. I did have to lay out my squash, my yellow squash, and my, um, my zucchini out because they did get a little perspired, um, and that is fine. Now I'm going to just sort of make them look pretty any way you want, but I'm going to shingle them a little bit all the way around, all right? all the way around. So within this border, you can be as fancy as you want and just make it pretty. I have preheated my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to make sure it's going to be nice and hot. And if you don't use all your zucchini, you can eat it, save it for a salad, uh, whatever you want to do. But uh, I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay. So I like to make little concentric circles, uh, but you can do it any way you want. And it just looks so beautiful. It just looks like very inviting and yummy. And wait till you smell the cheese and the crust with the butter and the crust. It's absolutely delicious. And shingle those so you see them all the way around, okay? All right. And it doesn't matter if the yellow is touching the green or the green is touching the yellow. Who cares? It's all going to get deliciously eaten by everybody. So that's lovely right there. All right. And now I'm going to put a little bit of cracked black pepper and a little bit of coarse salt over the top. Remember, we salted our zucchini and our summer squash, so we don't want to do overdo it too much. And just a little cracked black pepper. If you don't like the cracked black pepper, just, just leave it on. Or if you want to do something a little more powerful, you can. But I think, you know, you don't want to overpower these beautiful zucchini. All right. And now I'm going to take one egg that I've beaten lightly and with a pastry brush, I'm just going to go around the edging just so it sticks once it once it gets flipped over, and then we're going to egg wash it again on top. So now I'm just going to flip over, just flip it over. All right, very rustic. This is food for the people. This is not like fancy schmancy for kings and queens. This is for everybody. This is absolutely delicious. Look how pretty that looks. And then you're going to press it in, press it in, press it in. All right, I'm going to go around the edges. Now, what I have done is, in preparation, when it comes out of the oven, I have some very thinly sliced chives, about three tablespoons, and I also have some grated lemon zest, which goes beautifully with zucchini and summer squash. Just, like, really very complimentary. Very, you know, sort of a little citrusy, um, and you have that, those essential oils from the lemon, and you're going to scatter it over, but not now. Don't do it now. Wait till it bakes. And we want it to be nice and golden brown. So it's going to bake for about 45 to 50 minutes. You're going to have to look at your oven uh, maybe about 40 minutes uh, after we start baking it. Take a look. Some ovens are hotter than others. And then when it comes out, Right before you serve it, you are going to scatter it with that beautiful grated lemon zest, that zest of that beautiful lemon. Remember, only do the yellow, and then you're going to do your top, chopped chives on top, and then you want to dig in. Yum. So I'll see you on the back side. 400 degrees, 45 to 50 minutes. Look at my summer squash galette. It just came out of the oven. It's gorgeous. Look at it. It's so beautiful and brown. And the cheese is gooey underneath. And now I'm going to take my grated lemon zest and I'm just going to go just, just sort of sprinkle, sort of scatter, scatter it around because zucchini and summer squash 
just goes beautifully with a little citrus. And then we're going to chive it up. We're going to chive it up. So I have about three tablespoons of fresh chive. You don't want to use dried. Oh, beautiful. And then you're going to cut it into wedges. And you can serve it as a brunch dish. You could serve it as an appetizer with a glass of wine or a mocktail. That would be delicious uh, before your dinner or your barbecue. This would be fit for a king on Father's Day as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you become a subscriber. Till next time.